Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host Nathan P. Butler. This is the second in our little side series here of top whatever lists. Um, basically the ground rules will tend to stay the same throughout, which is basically just to understand this is a personal top whatever list. Uh, your opinion may vary, that's fine, that's what opinions do, uh, but in this case this is my personal opinion on a particular topic. Um, Typically what you will find is that the things that are included in a top whatever list are things that for the most part I would agree on day to day, but the actual ranking order within that might vary from day to day depending on when you ask me and how I feel about a particular topic. Also, as far as the comments, one, make sure that you are being civil. I love civil conversation about this stuff and engaged conversation about this stuff. That said, this is not a place to just do your knee-jerk, uh, I hate Disney, I hate Fox, I uh, kind of stuff. Um, be mature about it uh, and basically don't be a jerk. Um, last video did result in some folks being put on the hide user from channel list because they were more disruptive than actually being productive parts of the conversation. So. That sort of is what it is. Um, I would also say that if you have any sort of suggestions about future episodes, feel free to drop that into the comments. There's a lot of suggestions already from the home video Facebook group and in the comments from the first of these, and now I'm sure there'll be some here in the second batch. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to new topics to explore as the number of actual new items being released is small enough now that I wanna make sure the series is able to keep going without it dwindling because of the dwindling nature of new releases. So this time, what are we looking at? We are looking at the top five frustrations that I have with release decisions that were made by 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment or its predecessors. Remember, it was 20th Century Fox Video with Magnetic Video, which then kind of got folded in, then CBS Fox Video, then Fox Video, then 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. And they had the distribution rights to the bulk of Star Wars for a very long period of time. Um, eventually, once Disney wound up purchasing Lucasfilm, they got the digital distribution rights to All But A New Hope uh, because the A New Hope rights, basically the digital, the physical, any distribution rights were tied up with 20th Century Fox in perpetuity, meaning forever. And then the physical distribution rights for the other six of Lucas's original films, the live action films, uh, were with 20th Century Fox until 2020. But of course, in 2019, Disney purchased 20th Century Fox out from underneath 21st Century Fox as part of the many entertainment assets that they purchased, which brought it all under one house. So now we see these unified releases under Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment, but not until the last couple of years, meaning there's a long history of 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment for them to have made some questionable decisions. And as I said on the last of these, when we looked at the Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment frustrations that I had, same rule applies. If there's something that was not released, it would have to be covered in the context of something where a broader product line was released, but something was left out. Something that is just a non-release, like not releasing an HD version of the Unaltered Trilogy or something like that, would not be fair game for this list because that wasn't part of a product line that previously existed. Same thing with uh, not releasing a 3D version of The Phantom Menace. Much as I hate that there wasn't one when it was out in theaters and we know the other prequels existed that were shown at celebrations, that wouldn't be fodder for a video like this either. Those will be fodder for something later where maybe I look at the truly unreleased stuff, not just poor decisions on product lines that did get released. So we dive in here. We're looking at top five this time. The numbers will tend to vary, but this time it's five like last time. Number five, frustrating decisions made by uh, the Fox era of Star Wars distribution here for home video, um, it has to be the laser discs. The laser discs are this interesting kind of juxtaposition within Star Wars home video fandom because people love the laser discs, right? If you're into that great format war era stuff back when it was CED, laser disc, Betamax, and VHS, laser disc was really the best way to view. Still really good to view if your TV happens to be CRT. And yes, that is cathode ray tube, the type of television, nothing to do with critical race theory, whole different thing. Um, but to say that they were the best presentations, while that may be accurate, is often to overlook that their approach to these releases was really scattershot and not so great in the long run. Um, there were some true gems among the Laserdisc releases under Fox, but their approach was nothing short of just kind of a mess, in my opinion. So you have your original releases, right? All in my little protective packaging here. You have your original releases that come out. And for A New Hope and Empire, 
they're time compressed. They want to keep costs down for consumers to try to get into those homes. So what we get is a one disc affair for each of those two films. They don't actually fit on one CLV extended play one hour on each side disc normally. So they do time compression to shrink them down and make them fit, meaning that they are shorter because of that in runtime than their VHS and so on counterparts. A little bit frustrating, but then comes Return of the Jedi, and they decide with Jedi, nope, no time compression, we'll just split it across two CLV discs. This is how they probably should have done it for all three of them, but instead, every time we see these full screen releases for the laser discs of the original trilogy, Jedi is not time compressed, Empire and A New Hope are for those extended play discs. They even tried to get another bite at that Apple after Superior stuff was already out back around 92 with these black border bottom versions that included, as you may recall recently, a couple of different versions of Return of the Jedi with either white or silver logos to go with the other ones. So full screen extended play discs, time compressed for A New Hope and Empire, not time compressed for Jedi, regardless of the times that they were being released. They did then have a full screen launch on standard play or CAV discs. Those are the ones that hold about half an hour on each side. And they did A New Hope and they did Empire. They never bothered to do Return of the Jedi at all in that format, at least for a matching set with those. And they screwed up on the packaging. When you look at the timestamp, the uh, runtime on both of those, it says the time compressed runtime, not the correct runtime. And this is before the internet, so this is when the only way you would know for sure what the real runtime is, unless you checked it yourself, if you were sort of a discerning buyer trying to decide whether to buy them because you weren't sure if they were time compressed or not, you had to look in like a trade magazine where they happened to mention it uh, in some cases. So, yeah, yeah. An unfinished trilogy on this format and they screwed up the running time listing, which was part of the reason why people would be leaning towards these versions in the first place. Then you get the saga of the widescreen special editions being based on the special collection laser discs over from Japan that we looked at in detail for A New Hope back in episode 400 of From the Star Wars Home Video Library. You get a first release pressed by Pioneer. It's got the, the supposed shrinking aspect ratio issue, which is really a shrinking picture issue as the aspect ratio is growing because the matting is screwed up so it keeps narrowing the picture as you go along the film. Pressed by Pioneer under CBS Fox. They put out one under Fox Video by Mitsubishi. Nope, same thing, same problem as before. It is only later, whenever Technodisc in the US takes over pressing the discs, that you get a fixed one that is a really nice picture version of A New Hope for the special widescreen edition, but the damage is done because it says Fox Video 2. Lots of people don't know how to tell the difference between them without looking at the discs. These are the ones that say Made in USA only at the bottom. So you had that issue, and then you had minor issues with some of the matting framing and picture location for these. Very nice. First time we got widescreen releases in the US whatsoever, so big important landmark moment. Still, had its problems. Then you get what most see as one of the greatest Star Wars home video releases of all time. The Definitive Collection, right? CAV Laserdisc set, lots of bonus features and whatnot, which was kind of a new thing at the time. Uh, commentary tracks, if you got the ability to switch between your audio tracks, just really, really nice set. But even then, had its issues. Minor flaws here and there. Uh, some flaws caused them to reauthor one of the Jedi discs and in the process got rid of one of the commentaries that's still listed in the notes for later pressings. And this was the first time that a Star Wars release required replacement discs for those who picked up the first pressings because there was a disc of Empire where one of the sides was missing a few seconds at the beginning so we didn't see all of Leia welding uh, on the Millennium Falcon before Han comes in and you know talk about how he's a nice man and all that kind of stuff. So even this sort of poster child of the amazing nature of some of these early releases, the one that is thought of as one of the best releases of all time for Star Wars Home Video, had its problems. After that, it's just a matter of sort of the way that they chose to sell stuff. THX Remastered Edition in 95. Individual releases, no boxed set. What the hell? 1997, special editions. Box set, no individual releases. Again, what the hell? And by then, that is the death knell of Laserdiscs for Star Wars in the US, which means that even though The Phantom Menace got a Laserdisc release in Japan, we didn't get one over here. Yeah, we'll be coming back to that in a moment when we look at the treatment of the prequels, but not quite yet. That brings us to number four, which is one that 
honestly, it doesn't affect a whole lot of fans, really, but it's something that really bothers me as someone who is a student of history. I mean, I am a history slash economics slash political science, et cetera, et cetera, teacher. So this really, really bugs me how they handle this particular release. And that is the Navajo language edition of A New Hope in the U.S. That was this thing here. So it was a huge, huge deal when Manuelito Manny Wheeler and his team uh, from the Navajo Nation Museum got together and basically got Lucasfilm's blessing to do a full-length, fully dubbed audio version of A New Hope using the Navajo language, Diné, right? Huge deal. Uh, there's a big movement afoot to try to sort of preserve that language as many of the Native American languages are starting to disappear. And one of the ways they sought to do that was to get big, major motion pictures and actually go in and do full audio dubs, full cast audio versions of those, uh, by, by which I mean basically the movie with a new audio track that has language uh, from that particular language as opposed to, say, French or Spanish or English or whatever it might be. Um, but that was a big movement to try to do that through these major motion pictures to draw attention, um, to show a relevancy of the language, and basically just to kind of intrigue people who might speak the language or be interested in the language or have that as part of their culture to actually delve a little bit more into it. Huge, huge thing that Lucasfilm allowed this. Um, in the history of language preservation for Native American languages, this was a major, major milestone and paved the way for future ones like Finding Nemo, for instance, to be done in Navajo. And it was done a couple of years after the 2011 Blu-rays were made, right? Using the 2011 cut of the films that found themselves initially on Blu-ray and then eventually on DVD as part of those combo packs in 2013. Given the fact that the source version they were using was the 2011 Blu-ray cut of the film, you would have hoped that for something this momentous, in 2013 when they finally did put it out, they would bother to put it on f***ing Blu-ray. It's a huge deal. Okay. Best picture quality, this great new audio that's done uh, fully in the Navajo language, that is a huge, momentous thing. Why not give it the best presentation possible in 2013? Instead, it's put on DVD. Now, kudos to them for releasing it at all, right? Short, little, small run initially for uh, the local area there, and then eventually made available through places like Walmart.com's website, uh, which I guess is you know, Walmart's website, Walmart.com. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, something that people can find now on places like eBay as a secondary market kind of stuff here. But when you're using the Blu-ray cut, why not put it on Blu-ray? I, I guess it was a production cost thing, maybe, but it feels like it sort of takes this momentous event in language preservation uh, and the crossover between that and pop culture and doesn't really give it its due by making it DVD only instead of Blu-ray. Now, that said, you can watch the HD, in fact, I think maybe even the 4K film, actually with this on Disney Plus now. But there's a catch. The Disney Plus version is the McClunky edition, right? So what they've done is they've taken the audio that was made for 2011, split it, scooted it, allowed the McClunky in between that didn't need to be uh, translated or anything or, or dubbed, and then allow the audio to play on either side of it. So you can turn on an audio option to listen to the Navajo version. However, this has the entire opening crawl done in Navajo, and for some inexplicable reason, the version on Disney Plus does not allow the ability to view with the actual Diné Navajo opening crawl. It's just the regular English opening crawl. So even then, what you're getting in HD, or 4K as the case may be, on Disney Plus while it's most of this presentation isn't the whole thing, you don't get to see the language as written there as the opening crawl. Why swamp out the opening crawl? Who the hell knows? Maybe they were having flashbacks to 2006, which we'll get to in a little bit. Coming in at number three, it is the treatment of the Lego Star Wars stuff. They started at great heights. They released something that was basically the poster child for what releases could be from 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment, and it was a straight downhill trajectory after that to the point where they made a release that really, even to this day, pisses a lot of fans off. Um, jumping the gun, very much like we will see with a certain prequel release here in a moment. So they start out with this amazing package here. Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Beats the Blu-ray DVD combo packs of either trilogy to the punch by a couple of years, right? And it's got a minifigure, 
and all the bonus features on DVD are also on the Blu-ray and vice versa, just HD or SD. So regardless of which disc you're looking at, same bonus features, same presentation, just HD or SD. You got the minifigure, what's not to love? And this eventually gets a reissue years later through Walmart that also even includes a digital copy. Right. Great, great package there for one quick little Lego special. Second special gets aired, comes out on home video, it's already a step backwards. DVD only, not much in the way of any kind of bonus features to speak of or anything like that, but at least it still has a minifigure. But the Blu-ray option is gone. Then they say, you know what? We're launching the Yoda Chronicles. We're going to have a series of episodes, not just these little standalone things. We'll put that on a home video too. But they jump the gun like morons, and this is what we get instead. There's seven episodes in the full Yoda Chronicles, but only three, the first three, are part of the original Yoda Chronicles from Cartoon Network put out by 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. Okay? The other ones are the final four episodes, the new Yoda Chronicles, which do continue the story, put out on Disney XD and then through Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment. Um, this is the one regular release we get for Yoda Chronicles in the U.S. from 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment, and it only includes two of the three episodes. It was released before the third episode even aired. Who thought that was a good idea? That's moronic. That is asinine. That is some seriously, seriously stupid shit. And instead, this is what we get. And eventually we do get like a combo pack that takes the DVD but no Blu-ray or minifigure out of that first one, and then the DVD but no minifigure out of the second one, and the disc out of this one and puts it into a much more substandard sort of bargain package that you could get at Walmart for those. But at no point in the U.S. does 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment ever release the third episode of the Yoda Chronicles. They stick with this stupid-ass decision of two episodes instead of three. And the end result is that we now have a series that in the U.S. is missing one episode. We have episodes one and two, and then thanks to Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment's release of new Yoda Chronicles, four, five, six, seven. No episode three. You want episode three of Yoda Chronicles, you need to do it digitally or you need to watch it on Disney+. Plus. And it's not that that wasn't an option or there's some kind of like rights issue or something. They couldn't put it on home video. They had to only do the other two. You could still fill your gap in your collection by getting this out of Germany. That's the one missing episode. Or get, say, the Scandinavian release out there that includes episodes one, two, and three. Was that so damn hard? They even look the same. Unfortunately, these don't have the original English audio. Even if you could play them over here with it being PAL and all. Our chance to actually have a full physical set of Yoda Chronicles seems to have been completely blown away. I can't imagine they will ever bother to finish that out. So for the U.S., it's just a gaping, albeit small, hole in the Star Wars Home Video Library. And really, no excuse for it. If you're going to put it on DVD, that's crappy enough as it is in the particular era in which these were released. But you're going to not even give us all the episodes? Fire whoever made that decision. Coming in at number two, we have the treatment of the prequels. In the U.S., the handling of the prequels kind of sucked. So we have The Phantom Menace finally hits home video in 2000, uh, the year after its theatrical release. We don't get a Laserdisc version at all, whereas places like Japan did. We get VHS releases in 2000. We get the full screen VHS copy, which also has, you know, like the the variant that you could get at Toys R Us. But if you want a widescreen version of it, you can't just buy a regular retail release in widescreen. Instead, you have to buy this. This has the widescreen version in it. Other regions, you can just buy a widescreen copy, no big deal, just a regular old cassette. Not over here though. Over here, it's gotta be in the fancy schmancy, more expensive edition, which also leads to a lot of people later on eBay trying to sell the cassette out of this as if it was a separate release when it was not, possibly misled by the fact that other regions got that too. It's 2000, people expect maybe a DVD release, no DVD release immediately. Instead, the DVD release comes the next year. And they kind of jump the gun because the US market isn't quite ready, as Marty McFly would say, for widescreen only, and yet that's exactly what they do. Like in most regions, a widescreen only DVD release of the prequels. Really chock full of stuff, really great release, but widescreen only which causes some people to have a bit of backlash so that in 2002, when they release Attack of the Clones, they also have to put out a full screen release, kind of as a, uh, an afterthought. But that means that the matching set aspect is missing from these two, because while there is full screen and widescreen, 
Notice it says full screen. This one doesn't say widescreen. It says every saga has a beginning because it was the only one of its kind. It didn't need to be marked as widescreen, which means it's not going to match the rest of the prequels, at least on DVD. 2002 gives us Attack of the Clones, widescreen marked as widescreen, and full screen DVDs, and gives us a release on VHS, but only in full screen. We don't get a widescreen option for Attack of the Clones in the U.S. at all for VHS. At the same time, they decide to sort of jump the gun with the idea of, hey, let's have a boxed set of the prequels. I'm sorry, we're three years away from Revenge of the Sith even being out in theaters. The hell are you talking about a box set? How about a substandard full screen box set on both formats? So a full screen box set as the saga video pack, which is not the full saga, not even the full prequel trilogy, and the saga DVD pack, which over here was full screen only, which again is kind of asinine. And of course we got, you know, the, the club packaging variants and things like that. We're just kind of looking at sort of the pattern here. And then for Revenge of the Sith, we get widescreen and full screen DVD releases in packaging labeled with widescreen. So they match the, all the full screen ones match and the widescreen ones match for Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith, but not necessarily Phantom Menace, at least not if you look up at the top. There is no box set initially. That has to wait until 2008 and zero VHS release of Revenge of the Sith in the U.S. whatsoever. Other regions like the U.K. get it. The U.S. does not, which basically means that we have an unfinished trilogy on VHS. We've been picking up VHS since 1982 in the U.S. over and over again, different iterations, different packaging, over and over and over, and when it finally comes time for us to finish out Lucas's six film saga, which at the time he was saying was all that was ever meant to be, which is bullshit, um, when the time finally comes for us to get the full saga, nope, sorry, not even full screen, you don't get Revenge of the Sith on VHS at all. That's a load of crap. Um, so no laser disc for Phantom Menace. No VHS for Revenge of the Sith. The screwed up situation with these saga packs that aren't really saga packs of anything is just two films bundled together. The lack of a widescreen VHS release at all of Attack of the Clones and only a fancy schmancy one for Phantom Menace, along with the fact that Phantom Menace's DVDs don't exactly match across the way, thanks to the fact that it was initially jumping the gun with just a widescreen version. All that stuff makes for me a lot of frustration. Um, I would say that the widescreen Attack of the Clones being missing not having widescreen versions of the saga packs if they were going to make them at all, and especially the lack of Revenge of the Sith, those together make this a pretty frustrating one um, overall. And that brings us to number one, the treating of the gout. And you're like, gout? I heard about that in like an Adam Sandler song or something. That doesn't seem pleasant. No, though, we're not talking about a medical condition here. We're talking about the G-O-U-T, George's Original Unaltered Trilogy or theatrical versions of the film, depending on what you want that T to actually mean. I've seen it a couple of different ways. Um, the supposedly unaltered releases that we got on home video in 2006 and then repackaged in 2008. What they advertised was, uh, includes digitally remastered and original theatrical movies, okay? Original theatrical version presented in widescreen. Does say four by three letterbox format, aspect ratio 2.35 by one. We'll take a look at that. Um, in the UK, uh, includes both the digitally remastered and original cinema versions of each film. In Australia, includes digitally remastered and original theatrical movies. Okay. Over and over and over again, they kept referring to original theatrical versions, right? The unaltered original theatrical versions of the films. And they built hype up for this release in 2006 like crazy when we eventually got them either individually, widescreen, or full screen, or in some cases, in those collector's tins. There wasn't a box set in the U.S. outside the collector's tin until the box set that repackaged them in slim cases in 2008. But they played the hell out of the idea. Whether you were getting this as regular releases or like store exclusives like the ones at Target with the lithograph little concept art things and whatnot. Um, they played the hell out of the fact that these were going to finally be your opportunity to get the unaltered original films to be able to watch at home. And it wasn't really true. What we were actually getting was basically this on DVD, this version of the films. Uh, the version that was cleaned up in the early 90s for release as a definitive collection uh, in 1993, and then eventually as a THX remastered edition in 1995. THX cleaned up 
in that sense. So that's, I guess, a good thing, but certainly not the original version of any of the films. If you're talking about audio as part of the presentation, which obviously it is, even if we don't count the fact that the video has been cleaned up at least for that 1993 version, which is what they use as the masters for 2006, this is the second different audio mix we've had for Return of the Jedi. It is the second audio mix we've had, and that is on home video, for The Empire Strikes Back. And it's the third one we've gotten for A New Hope, because we had the original release back in 82, we had Ben Burt doing the remastering in 85 that found its way to VHS starting in 86, and then we had this one. In no way is this the original theatrical audio mix. It's close. It's damn close. It's nearly imperceptibly close. But it's not the original. Not really. As for the films themselves, what did they do? They just used the masters from 1993 and they spliced in, kind of like with the Navajo edition, they spliced in a different crawl at the beginning of the film. They took a nice film copy, uh, they scanned in the original opening crawl without the A New Hope subtitle, the episode number, and with some of the different alignment of the letters, and they spliced that in for the beginning of A New Hope, but the rest of A New Hope and all of Empire and Jedi, they're just the definitive collection from 93. And that in and of itself is a bit of false advertising. It's not saying it's recreating the original presentation, they're saying it's the original version, and it's not. So for those who are super nitpicky like I am, that's kind of a false advertising issue. But on top of that, they were playing the hell out of the fact that you were going to be able to get this. And their way of actually presenting it felt like it was a, you know what? The people want it. Screw them. Give them this. At least that'll tie them over and they'll shut the hell up. That seems to have been the attitude taken. Not, let's give them the original version because this is going to be awesome. It was more of a, oh my God, will you shut the hell up with your yapping about one of the original version? Fine. Here, 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 here. Just take it and like it. And what they gave us was a non-anamorphic, letterboxed widescreen version. And it was a widescreen version no matter which version of the regular film you bought. So if you were someone who, for some ungodly reason, preferred to watch in full screen rather than widescreen, uh, 4x3 full screen, then you're going to wind up having to watch the full screen version of the 2004 cuts because those original unaltered versions from 93... Those are going to be widescreen regardless. Whether you bought yourself a blue full screen set or a gold widescreen set, doesn't matter. The bonus discs were all identical, all letterboxed widescreen. And there really hadn't been a whole lot of cleanup to the picture. In fact, what cleanup there was appears to have damaged the picture compared to watching on Laserdisc, then making it better. So we got something that was sort of a careful what you wish for type of moment. Like we should have specified more. Kind of like with the Black Border releases I talked about last time. We want Black Border uh, Last Jedi to match the rest. Here you go. Here's the old packaging with the black slip cover. Okay, but what about the updated discs? Well, you didn't mention that. You just said you wanted black slip cover. Damn it. We should have been more specific. Same thing here. If we wanted a better cleaned up copy, if we wanted an anamorphic widescreen copy, if we wanted something other than what they gave us, this substandard, letterboxed widescreen, slightly altered pickup from the 93 version that really isn't the unaltered anything. If that hadn't been what we wanted, maybe we should have said what we actually wanted more specifically. But at the same time, when someone says, hey, we want this, and we're talking about the current format, and this is upon watching the current format in its crispness and whatnot at the time, you would think that should go unspoken that, hey, we want the original unaltered versions. We're not asking, hey, we want the shitty versions. We want the versions with the crap picture and the crap audio. What we're saying is we want the one without all the special edition and 2004 tweaks. How is that not obvious? Of course it was obvious at the time. That wasn't what they gave us. That wasn't what they tried to give us. They tried to take the path of least resistance to get something out to shut people up. And now... That may be the only time we see that version on anything beyond Great Format War stuff. Aside from fan restorations. It is that release in 2006 that is why fan restorations are even still a thing today. Whether we're talking Harmy or any of the other ones. Okay? Why is there a despecialized edition? Because when the time came for them to have the opportunity to give us a despecialized edition, to give us an original unaltered version, they spat in our faces with what they gave us. Granted, you can make arguments for what bits still even exist. There are conflicting stories of what even exists of original prints to be able to make an unaltered edition to look better and put out there. But if fans can do it, 
with fan resources, surely 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment could have done it, but they chose not to. That, to me, is the biggest, biggest frustration. I mean, I joke all the time about how they're not really the unaltered editions, because they really aren't, right? It's the third version of A New Hope, it's the second version of Empire, it's the second version of Jedi, at least when it comes to home video releases and the remastering process and changing the audio around and stuff like that. I joke about that, because it is so asinine they called it unaltered, even though it's not. But really... If you think about the decision-making process that went into it, what they chose to put out versus what they perhaps could have put out or what they should have known people were asking for, there's no way there wasn't a level of spite or some type of negativity in that to just say, here, take this, we know it's not great, but we're throwing it out there to you anyway so that you'll shut up. In no way can I look back at the 2006 DVD releases and think that this is 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment saying we're going to celebrate the originals. It wasn't, let's all celebrate together, it would sit down and shut up. And that's unfortunate. Still, an okay way to watch the originals on a modern player, because most will still play DVDs, if you don't have access to a previous generation player and you want to see something that is close to the originals, but not actually the originals. Uh, they're probably as close as we're going to get, and for most the nitpickiness that I go through mentally when I see these and know that they're not the original originals, even though they claim to be, won't be an issue. It'll just be, thank goodness we can see something pre-1997. But I would like for them to actually give us what they advertised, not give us something that's not as advertised and is not of the quality level that anyone truly expected back in 2006. Um, so that will always be a major frustration for me, even if I don't always voice it every time it comes up, because I would wind up on a rant kind of like this one. So there you have it, the top five frustrations that I have when it comes to the Fox era of Star Wars home video release product decisions. Um, we'll have more of these top five videos in the near future, uh, probably one eventually on things that were just never released, and I am trying to come up with enough things that maybe we could have one for the other companies, like Warner Brothers Home Entertainment, or more, I guess it was Warner Brothers Home Video at the time, um, for Clone Wars and stuff like that, maybe J2 Communications for Droids and Ewoks, but... Really, there's not a whole lot of non-Fox, non-Disney releases to speak of, let alone the big blunders like these to be able to talk about. But maybe. Maybe it just will be like a top four or something like that instead of a top five. We'll also be looking at, you know, the unreleased stuff at some point, some of the best stuff. Uh, there are plenty of other topics to cover with top lists. Uh, this is simply the second. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers.